Hello, my soccer universe. Newsflash. Messi continues to be ridiculous, as he showed yesterday, and... Yeah. <laughs> what can you else say? He, he clearly is not as great as he was, let's say, 2011 or 2012, but he's still pretty darn good and above the rest of them all. Uh, it's such a slow decline. I, I wonder. When will he decline that goes better? I mean, yesterday he was ridiculous. Yes, it was only via the lead, but still, still, two assists, two goals, and both goals, uh, you wonder, they're out of this world. Um, I mean, first things first, it was a 1 0 long lay with an uh, absolute golasso, twice deflected, and then the equalizer for via the lead, yeah, can happen. The Ter Stegen didn't look good, but uh, he had a bad sidelines. And then it's the Messi show. It is the Messi show. Uh, especially, uh, he provides a wonderful assist to Vidal, where Vidal just needs to a little bit touch the ball and goes nicely into the net. Then, free kick, you think it's a little bit far out? No, no, not for Messi. Sails in another free kick goal. And I think. This is why Ronaldo is taking free kicks, because he wants to get as good as Messi, but no one can be good as Messi. I I would argue that for sure. I mean, I don't think that the type of player that Messi is is my favorite type of player, but I would argue there is no better free kick taker has ever been than Lionel Messi. Maybe Juninho? But he didn't show much else. Messi is such a complete package for a complete player. This consistent free kicks, it's absolutely ridiculous. I actually think that his second goal uh, on the assist of Rahak Rakitic was even more ridiculous in many ways. First, the way how he controls the ball, turns around and then nets it in. You cannot, what's better? His control or the finish? It's both pretty amazing. And then he assists Suarez, who is now uh, netted against all opponents in La Liga. And Barcelona is back on top. Uh, now, you, this post, I will put again, make a whole video of the matches that I watched. Uh, so at the time you post this, my review from the weekend, where I said Granada is on top. It's already old news because Barcelona is now on top and now they're level up points. However, Granada will play uh, tonight. So yeah, uh, that was it from La Liga. I actually did not see the Barcelona game. <laughs> uh, my wife and I fell asleep very sweetly on the couch next to each other. But what I saw was Alaves Atletico Madrid, which is a horrible game, absolutely atrocious game. And fortunately, at the same time, there was the German Cup conference on, which was a whole lot more exciting. I wouldn't have picked a single game from there. But if you can watch it, uh, where they switch between the games, I actually thought this was a pretty cool thing. Uh, quickly, Alaves Atletico. Atletico takes a late lead through uh, Morata, and you think they will get a, a nasty win finally again? No. Uh, ten minutes later, I think Alaves equalizes. Let's see quickly. Morata in the 70th and 83rd, Perez gets. Uh, Perez's goal was a really, really nice goal. Um, gets the equalizer and adds 1 1, and uh, Atletico quickly loses ground, especially once it's you see it play. If you only play draws and you cannot score, <clears throat> you are in a rut a little bit. Uh, let's talk German Cup because uh, there were quite a few results. I mean, I mean, the big stunner of the evening, although, yeah, is Saarbrücken having a quick 2 lead over Köln. Uh, Köln actually finding an equalizer um, in the 84th. And in the 90th, really nice attacking move. So Brücken finds the winner. All goals in the second half. So that was an exciting uh, match. I, I remember Saarbrücken being in the Bundesliga. That has been a while. Uh, the other uh, big game, of course, was Bayern's struggle um, at Bochum. Do you remember Bochum from the Bundesliga? Yeah, there were the days when they had the Faber shirt that was so colorful and so on. Darius Wasch, I think, was the player. But it has been a while that Bochum played up there. They're now more a second uh, league team. They took the lead to an on, due to an own goal. I mean, Bayern had possession. Yes, they did not play their first string squad and so on. Uh, the Bochum jerseys were not as nice. This is like this Nike template, but just with uh, dark sleeves and then white and it goes way too high up, whatever. Um, they get the lead and fight, 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 but then it breaks apart in the last 10 minutes. Uh, 
when first uh, Gnabry gets an equalizer, then a yellow red, and then a minute later Müller in the 88th, and then a minute later Müller uh, gets the winner. It was not a great performance by Bayern, but they get the job done, and that's uh, what counts in the end. Um, Freiburg had a kind of a heartbreaking loss to uh, Union Berlin, where with Union Berlin scoring two goals uh, in the last 10 minutes. That was a little bit surprising. Then I saw a lot about Hamburg against Stuttgart. Uh, the Hamburg jerseys, I have to say, I like the jersey by itself. And I know that Hamburg plays in white, red, and then with blue socks that have a little bit black and white. And uh, if you look at the club's crest, it's all blue, white and uh, black, but they play in white and red because of the, also the city colors of Hamburg. I think they're kind of caught in this visual uh, undecidedness, I have to say. And together that the jersey, except for the sponsor, every, everything is white, blue and black, and then you have the red pads with it. It, it, it just looks too much of a mishmash. Stuttgart played in black. Um, which I didn't like too much either, but I understand because if they would play in the red, this would not work either. So, all right, all right. Uh, when I got it, it was 1-1 one, one, and I had the feeling that Stuttgart had the better of it for most of the time. And then it went to overtime where Stuttgart got the goal after one player hit the post and it came back and then it goes into the near corner right where the goalie was standing. So I thought it was a goalkeeping error, but Stuttgart gets... Uh, deserve it winner. Uh, and those were an old notable chance. I mean, Hoffman wins at Duisburg. Um, Schalke has a 3 0 lead over Bielefeld, 3 um, 2. And uh, those were the ones that I actually think were remarkable. Yeah, but Le Leverkusen over Paderborn, a Bundesliga duel, duel, although it doesn't sound like it. And then there was Serie A with Parma stunningly losing against Verona. Uh, Gervinho, after a wonderful combination, hitting also the bar in the second half. The goal for Verona was a nice one. Parma probably should, should have gotten at least a draw, but hey, Verona gets a win. That's also not too bad. And then Brescia Inter. Um, similar Golazzo as Langley for Martinez, who takes a long range shot, takes a wicked deflection, goes into the net. Second half, Brescia is trying everything, and it became a personal duel between Balotelli and Hamdanovic, which Balotelli still hasn't scored on Hamdanovic. And then the big entry of Lukaku, who just runs and then wonderfully curls the ball into the net. I uh, have to say this was a beautiful goal. I didn't understand why Inter played in black jerseys and not in their uh, mint ones, although I like the black jerseys better. Uh, but I think this was two dark jerseys against each other. I mean, the contrast was well, was well, well, okay, but I thought it would have been otherwise better. Better, and I have to also say the contrast, hmm, uh, the color, the lighting was kind of flat in Brescia. Brescia pulls one back with too little, too late. Uh, Balotelli bicycle kick doesn't find anything. So um, that was my evening yesterday. Lots more to watch today. Uh, I actually have to see where I'm gonna start. Um, I know I wanna see Lask, but I wanna see some other games too. Um, probably Serie A, La Liga. So let's see. I'll tell you tomorrow and then, you know, we have a big video together. Then I'll just post and I hope my computer doesn't crash this time around. So let's see. Well, let's go straight to the elephant in the room. There was a tango match yesterday and I didn't watch it. There was an awesome, um, matchup in Italy and I didn't watch it. However, I don't really regret the choices that I made yesterday. Uh, I'm talking of course the Liverpool Arsenal uh, League Cup uh, matchup with two second string squads, although you know whenever even a Mesut Özil in there, is it really a second string squad? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but you know, I knew that they were playing reserve players, that it ends up in a 5-5 with Liverpool 1-0, then Arsenal 3-1, 2-3 at the half. 2-4, goes to 4-4, 5-4 Arsenal, and then in stoppage time, Origi with second pretty spectacular goal, makes it 5-5, and in the penalty shootout, there are less goals scored than in the match. That doesn't happen often. So yeah, it ends 5-5 and a 5-4 win in the penalty shootout for Liverpool, um, also in the League Cup, and I just saw the highlights, is that uh, United had a pretty good first half, where they take the league through a Rashford penalty, Chelsea then has a much better second half and get an um, deserved equalizer. And then a wonderful, wonderful uh, Rashford free kick gets the winner for United. So a kind of uh, surprising result, but I don't think... When you saw Solskjaer and Lampard 
chatting uh, during the game, kind of, ha, 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 friends, friends, friends. No one is really bothered by the week Cup that much. Yes, it would be nice to have some silver there. But I wasn't watching either of these games. Um, what was I watching? Uh, I started at 7 o'clock. I put up uh, main screen Napoli against Atalanta because that was probably the biggest name matchup of the league games. And then uh, shall I go Sevilla, uh, Valencia, Val uh, Valencia, Sevilla, or shall I go... Real Sociedad Levante, and then I remembered Spanish football podcast. Um, Sid Lowe is saying, always watch La Sociedad. So I said, let's put on La Sociedad. <laughs> that did not go that well, because La Sociedad um, gave up two goals in the first half. Um, I think they had one taken away for themselves or whatever. But uh, Levante actually, with quite some counter-attacking, put them on the back foot. Uh, they pulled one back early in the second, but could not find the equalizer anymore. So a team that I thought that might actually go right past Granada and so on. No, they didn't make that. And uh, it stays a 2-1 win for uh, Real Sociedad. Um, in the other game, it was a 1-1 between Sevilla and Valencia, in Valencia, with a late equalizer for Valencia. So that was my Spanish watching. Yes, Real Madrid in the evening, I didn't see that either, although there would have been goals in there, but it was all very one-sided. After 30 minutes, it was a 3-0. For Real Madrid, actually quite some nice goals, especially one from Tony Kroos. Two penalties. Um, first penalty to make a 3-0 had to be retaken by Sergio Ramos because the goalkeeper was off the line. Yes, nitpicky maybe, maybe, but if I see how far he was off the line, I understand why it was retaken. So yeah, Real Madrid 5-0 um, even beats Barcelona's result from yesterday against Leganes. So that ends my Spanish watching and we can dive fully into Italian uh, Serie A and I also saw some cup action from Austria and Germany which I want to briefly talk about I don't have anything with me now so I'm really everything from memory here Napoli dominated Atalanta for most of the time got a deserved lead should have made it 2-0 and then uh, Meret after a toke toe poke poke toe toe poke from Freula, it goes between his legs in a very weird way and it's 1-1 at the half. And I know when uh, Napoli scored the 1-0, I was, yeah, and my daughter next to it. You know what this means? I said, what What do you mean what this means? Yeah, this means that they're losing. Because whoever scores first loses. I don't know where she came up with that. But I said, yeah, she cursed Napoli now. And with that equalizer, I said she cursed. Um, Napoli, though. Really, Milik uh, have, have, having chances, Lozano, the only thing is they had to have an early um, change. I think Alan got injured. So, yeah, and playing on Diego's birthday, mm -hmm, you would want to have a win there. Napoli really tried and created chances and finally made it 2-1 through Milik in the 70th at a time where I really thought, okay, this is not done and does it. Maybe get a second one uh, uh, to make it, make it a two-goal lead. And it would have been deserved. Yes, there were, there were some good chances by Atalanta. I think uh, Ilicic missed a pretty nice shot. Went that uh, closely passed. But overall, Napoli was the better team. And then they got robbed. There was uh, basically the Atalanta defender wrestled Llorente down in the box. It was not going uh, backward. It was going forward. Uh, referee... Judge it not to be a foul, and of course VAR has in those cases, and this is the one thing that is really, really hard to um, understand and to swallow. But if the referee has seen it, VAR is not overturned because it's a sub subjective call. I still would love that those are reviewed, and I think it was reviewed, but uh, it's not enough to overturn it. Drives me nuts, drives me nuts. Atalanta goes down, uses the chaos in the uh, Napoli organization, um, organization structure. Um, everyone really, really upset and Ilicic gets the ball very free. It was a wonderful through ball, puts it in the net, makes it 2-2 and then all hell breaks loose with both coaches for Napoli being sent up. Although I thought Angelotti actually really tried to keep things in check, to keep the players in check. But seemingly he also then eventually, because he was too much on the field, got sent off. Absolute mayhem. Uh, 
in once that mayhem cleared, uh, Atalanta could have made it even three two. Didn't make it. Uh, Napoli had chances, had half chances, but it ends in the two two. And again, points dropped for Napoli. Really, points dropped for Napoli. Uh, in the late game, I then watched a little bit uh, Lask's cup game against Altach and had Roma on the other screen. Roma gifting, get, getting a, a gift by Saniolo suddenly free for, in Udine. Uh, free from goal makes it 1 0. So, yeah, that's why I'm wearing uh, Roma. Then they get a send off that, yeah. It was last man, Fazio, if he's the ref sees it a foul, yeah, you have to send Fazio off. I think Okaka fell kind of nicely over, so yeah, <laughs> a little bit of robbery, but it didn't matter, because uh, Roma, right after half, Smalling gets his goal, shortly after Clivert makes it uh, 3-0, and then um, color of a penalty makes it 4-0 for Roma, it's an easy win, and uh, Roma even leapfrogs now um, Napoli, and is in a pretty good position, and I have to say, I like how Roma is playing. So, at the same time, I probably should not have watched Udine and Roma, although those are two teams that I like, that. that's why I put it, and I think uh, Roma is nice to watch, and I expect it's a little bit a better game than Juventus can gain, oh boy, was I wrong. First of all, what was Juventus playing in? Those looked like Halloween jerseys. I know this is something with Palace. I don't quite get it, but it's a new addition. But those look more like Juve jerseys than what they're actually wearing. I mean, yes, it's gray, uh, light gray and dark gray with stripes and then the neon green and then some pink on there. Uh, it's very colorful, but didn't look actually bad. I think in match, I don't think I would want Juventus to wear this, but in match it actually looked quite okay. And I thought this was, yeah, was more like a Juventus kit. More like that. Maybe too much fade, fade in there. I wouldn't give it high grades, but I liked it better than the current home jersey. Gotta say it as is. Juventus took a lead through Bonucci. Um, and then Genoa gets an equalizer where I think uh, Kurme takes a shot with the right, but hits with the shot his left foot and then it goes into the corner. Absolutely crazy goal. The game was right, uh, quite open and uh, it got even more messy because first Genoa gets a yellow-red, really ridiculous one. I mean, it was just a little pull at the, uh, around midfield. It's stupid, but it's not... A, if you are, are, are in yellow, don't give a second yellow. Juventus also got a yellow red then, which was similarly stupid. Um, Juventus really then tried to get the winner, uh, didn't get it, and you think Ronaldo got it, was offside of course, then there's a penalty given that Ronaldo really wanted, can't slam it home. It's 2-1 Juventus, Juventus stays top of the table. Uh, that would have been a big one, if Genoa can get a point at Juventus, that would have surprised me. So yeah, that was the Serie A action that I saw yesterday. There was a lot more, but I haven't even seen the results by now. We'll talk about them in the roundup video, of course. And then, yeah, Lask made short shrift of Altach. Um, I didn't see the 1-0 because I was still watching a Napoli game, which was a little bit more exciting. Um, and then, you know, I watched probably from the 25th minute on. Very, very quickly they made it 2-0 uh, at thereafter. Really nice. Uh, header by one of our small attackers, Frieza. Uh, Michael, after a wonderful combination, hits only the bar. Then a few minutes later, wonderful one-touch combination going on to Michael. Hits the post, goes on the back of the goalkeeper and it goes into the net. So, yeah, it's 3-0 at the half. Right there after going, uh, makes a nice shot again at the bar. And then I turned over to uh, Dortmund Gladbach. Because I thought this is going to be just a massacre and I think Dortmund Gladbach is a, a match that's really worth watching given what they had. And I actually switched at the right moment. I missed the consolation goal for Altach and also in the Austrian Cup Innsbruck had a sign of life uh, eliminating Wolfsburg. That was a huge sensation because Innsbruck now is in second league. But yeah. Around the 7th, uh, I, I switched to Dortmund Gladbach. Up until that point, when you uh, listen to the commentator, there was not much happening. Or maybe 60, 60th, 65th. Uh, it was not a good game. And then Gladbach scores the 1 0. And from that moment on, it got a really good game. Uh, going up and down, very intense. And within three minutes, Julian Brandt turns the game completely around. First makes a shot that is slightly deflected in the 77th and in the 80th, I think it was 
Uh, text and other shot that goes into in, in internet. Gladbach could have gotten an equalizer, but didn't manage. But yeah, um, from what I could say, it was an awesome game. I think if I would have watched all of it, probably not so much. Yeah, those were my observations for today. Yes, there was also uh, Marseille losing to Monaco. Monaco in good form in the Coupe de la Ligue. Um, 2 1. Having early chances, then Monaco gets a grip of the game only late. Payet, with, after goalkeeping mistakes, makes it 2 1. So, yeah, that's that. Tonight I'm going to watch the Halloween game. It will be scary how Milan is playing. Let's see how they played. That's next. Do you say? I have the new Milan jersey and they get a win. Well, I had the Milan jersey on Sunday already and they did not win, but they were not wearing it. But yeah, this was in any way the horror show except for the result. This was not scary. Um, in the first half, I really thought that Spal. Oh, I had the feeling Spal is way more often in our in Milan's half than the other way around, which is not what I would expect to happen. When I saw the lineup, I was thinking, "What is he thinking?" Um, Castillejo, Jalanoglu, Piontek, the front three. No, 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 Leao. He was the one who gave me a little bit of... Yes, he was not maybe very effective towards goal, but he gave me at least a little bit this um, extra the surprise element. was completely missing. Absolutely missing. Yes. Uh, first half was not good. Yes, Castillejo hit the uh, bar when he should have actually pulled it under the bar um, from close range. But that was basically it. In the builder play, Benazir got better as the game moved on, but overall, I really have to say, it was not a great showing. Second half then was better. Uh, Theo Hernandez, who is the only one where I think there's some dynamics behind it. That's the one thing that frustrates me with Mina so much. The slow play. So, I mean, it's like watching a game from the 80s in many ways, with the athleticism of current, but uh, it's so slow. Whenever they have the chance for a fast break, it slows down. Then, uh, you know, Jalanoglu, again, at his frustrating best, he wins a ball at one time, uh, has the chance to pull it across, put the nail in the coffin in a way. No. Then he spills it again. Ah, this is, just frustrates me to the core. Anyway, um, Suzu did not start. And I was wanting to see how is Milan without Suzu. Suzu is probably the best player. But he's so predictable. So predictable. And so it was not that bad that he didn't start. He comes on, gets a free kick. Wonderful free kick. Puts it into the internet. And that's the winner. Uh, Milan doesn't manage a second goal, although there were chances to do so, namely, uh, namely uh, Paqueta, who, yeah, they, it was a great save, so I don't blame it on Paqueta, but I would have wished that they just get a second, you know, get a good win for once, I mean, I win more than one goal. Frustrating a little bit, the whole whole thing, but yeah, win is a win, now, we, now Lazio at home, let's keep hoping, maybe things are on the up. I doubt it, but maybe things are on the up. Um, also saw Mallorca against Osasuna, which was an interesting game. Mallorca, I think, had, at least in the first half, more of the game. Got a penalty, took the lead from there. Uh, Osasuna equalized, I think, around the 70th. And a few minutes later, uh, Mallorca gets a second penalty. Different taken now. And then just, again, a few minutes later... Uh, Thunderous header from the edge of the box goes in, makes it 2-2. And I think the big result was that Granada loses to Getafe, 3-1. Uh, 2-0 already down at the half. I started watching from the 30th minute on. Uh, came the Getafe goals rather quickly from then. Uh, Granada tries to pull some back, but I think they were never really in the game. And so uh, I think the Granada story probably will end right around here. Um, with the two big boys now having a game less and separating themselves from the pack. I think this was this midweek round straight went into the Barcelona Real Madrid way, uh, and the two will take it out for a title. I'm pretty sure I can say that. Well, that was a whole lot over the last three days that I summarized. Um, let me know about the games that you watched, uh, how you liked them, add a comment below. I will do a roundup. I will you get a what to watch very soon. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.